Namaste everyone. Welcome to uh, CET NEET classes. Uh, we have been discussing about uh, capacitors, electric field, potential. Uh, we have finished 42 questions already. Now we will look into some uh, different types of questions. Um, uh, we going a little bit uh, deep into the topic. Right? And here is the 43rd one. Hope you can see that. Right? Two identical pit balls. Each of uh, each weighing 30 milligram are hung from the same point of a rigid support by two inextensible threads, which uh, each having a length of 0.1 meter. When equal amount of identical charge are given to the pit balls, 0.1 meter uh, uh, they separate by 0.1 meter. Uh, 0.1 meter separates them. The charge on each ball is so. Uh, yeah, along with what you have studied in first year, the um, finding the equal end of forces, you have to apply the second year theory also, right? Namaste. So this is uh, um, a, a new type of problem for you, but actually it is not new type one. It is already uh, um, uh, discussed. One part of the solution is discussed somewhere in first PC and another part is discussed in our second PC. You have to mix it up. You have to bring the basics from first PU and uh, the rest of the things from the second PU. Okay. Two identical pith balls. Pith balls, pith is a, I have told already, pith, ball, pith is a material which is uh, removed from the stem of a tree and it is very smooth and very lighter one and uh, it can be mixed with a little bit of metal and it can be made conducting and it is charged and uh, two balls are charged and they have the mass uh, 30 milligram and they are hung from the same point on a rigid support by two inextensible threads. Threads are not uh, uh, increasing their length. So they are very rigid and uh, so when you have two pit balls suspended like this and without charge they will be coming closer. As soon as you charge them uh, they start repelling. How much they will repel? What is the maximum angle at which they can accommodate? It should be, uh, maximum angle should be 180 because they can repel, repel, repel and they can go to a maximum distance of, so they can repel like this, they can repel like this, they can repel to a maximum angle of 180 because if they go further, the distance between them becomes closer. This is the maximum distance at which they can accommodate. You know that charges in a conductor always reside on the surface because they keep on repelling and the maximum distance at which they can accommodate is the outside part. Now they are separately charged particles, they try to move away and away, when the distance becomes equal to double the size of the thread, each thread, so they stop. So maximum distance at which they can accommodate is 180 degree. This is uh, possible only when there is no gravity, because the mass of the bob of the pendulum puts it downwards. So there is a, a force which is acting in downwards. So they will come to equilibrium at some point in between. So they will be under equilibrium at this condition. Now at this condition each bob is at rest under the, uh, um, um, uh, for, under the equilibrium of three forces. One is uh, weight, weight of the bob will be acting vertically downwards and the repulsion force say this is plus and this is plus both will be repelling each other and the repulsive force puts them away electrostatic force I'll write so electric electrostatic force of repulsion puts them as far as possible and uh, another one is that the resultant of these two the weight acting vertically downwards and the electrostatic force pushing it away and the resultant of these two will be acting like this and that will be balanced by the tension right so tension in the thread electrostatic force of repulsion and the weight and all the three quarrel each other and they come to an agreement and this is the maximum uh, position of the two charged particles and here the same story but I will deal with one of the charged particles that is enough for me. I need not worry about the other one also. The same story repeats for the other charged particle also and it is given two inextensible threads and their length is 0.1 meter so this is 0.1 meter this is 0.1 meter right both are 0.1 meters and they separate by 0.1 meters so automatically we have got a clue that it is a right angle uh, sorry uh, equilateral triangle so all the angles must be 60 degrees so one uh, just clue we have got now their question is what is the charge on each ball so let this be q and let this be q 
this is also 0.1 meter. Now what I'll do is I can go for Lemmy's theorem, law of triangle of forces, anything. So anything will help you. So now I'll simply draw a perpendicular here and I will vertically divide it like this. Definitely this is 30 degree, you know this or I'll take it as theta in general. If that is theta because the whole angle should be 60, it's an equilateral triangle. Uh, then this is also theta because uh, parallel lines and a bisector, so alternate. Now, just components of forces is enough. T cos theta should balance mg. If the whole system is in equilibrium, T cos theta must balance mg. T sin theta must balance uh, electrostatic force. If you work out two or three or four problems of this type, definitely this uh, area will be much easier for you. Okay, T cos theta. That, uh, uh, along with theta, we have cos theta, right? That component must take care of mg. And T sin theta, here, take another component of T. T sin theta must take care of the electrostatic force. Shall I write the value of electrostatic force? 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. QQ, QQ divided by distance squared. Distance square is 0 0.1 squared. And these two equations will uh, definitely give you the enough amount of uh, raw materials and uh, tools and uh, you can find out what is the uh, charge in both because here charge is the only factor which is uh, not known. And uh, you can divide them. T gets cancelled and this becomes tan theta and almost it is tan 30 degree moreover. So divide it, divide the two equations, you get tan theta is equal to what is tan theta um, or uh, shall I write the equations once again yes I will substitute the values T cos theta T cos 30 degree is equal to mg mg m 30 milligram 30 milligram minus 6 30 milligram to gram 10 to the power minus 3 and uh, gram to kg again 10 to the power minus 3 so totally 10 to the power minus 6 right so 30 milligram T cos 30, then uh, what about I am into G, G I will take it as 10, it is given and T sin 30 is equal to here 9 into 10 to the power 9 into Q square divided by R square, distance between the charges is 0 0.1, 10 to the power minus 1, whole square becomes 10 to the power minus 2, 10 to the power minus 1 whole square, correct? Now. Uh, suppose if I divide this sin 30 by cos 30 that is uh, um, uh, root 3 uh, no, sorry it is uh, 1 by root 3 right sin 30 1 uh, half cos 30 uh, root 3 by 2 so it is uh, tan 30 okay I will write it here tan 30 is equal to if I divide it uh, this will be 9 into 10 to the power 9 9 into 10 to the power 9 uh, sorry, I will put it as 9 into 10 to the power 11, right? So this is 9 into 10 to the power 11 Q square. 9 into 10 to the power 11 Q square divided by uh, 30 into 10 to the power minus 5. Is it okay? 9 into 10 to the power 11 Q square divided by 30 into 10 to the power minus 5. So that is about tan 30. So shall we? Shall I write it here now? I'll wrap this. I'll bring it back here. Tan 30 is 1 by root 3. Sin 30 is root 3 by 2. Cos 3, uh, sorry, sin 30 is half. Cos 30 is root 3 by 2. 2 gets cancelled. 1 by root 3 is equal to um, 9 into 10 to the power 11 Q square divided by 30 into 10 to the power minus 5. Okay. What is Q square? Q square is equal to... Um, 30 into 10 to the power minus 5 divided by root 3 into 9 into 10 to the power 11. Okay, so I will take it as 3 and I will bring 1 0 here. 30, this becomes 10 to the power minus 4, right? And then this 3 and root 3, 3 can be written as a root 3 into root 3. Can you see this? Right? It is raining heavily outside. So, hope you can see this, right? All right, I'll switch on some uh, tubes, one or two tubes, so that you can see them clearly. It's raining heavily. Yeah.
Right. So, hope you can see that now clearly, right? Right. Hope you can listen, right? So, there is a noise, uh, some amount of noise from the outside. So, Q square is uh, 3 into 10 to the power minus 4 divided by root 3 into 9 into 10 to the power 11. Now, we have to find out Q. So, this can be written as root 3 into root 3. So, finally remaining is root 3 by 9 uh, into 10 to the power minus 15. Correct? Uh, because uh, root 3 divided by 9. Yeah, this is 3 into 3 by 9 into 10 to the power minus 15. Uh, that is equal to Q squared. Of course, I have to uh, turn this uh, 10 to the power minus 15 into an even number so that I can take a square root. So, how to get it as an even number? Multiply and divide by uh, 10, then uh, 10 root 3. So, multiply and divide by 10. Oh, I should have retained this one of the 10 here. Okay, let it be. 10 root 3 divided by 9. And this 10 goes and makes it 10 to the power minus 16. So, that is Q squared. Okay, I'll keep on rubbing. Yes, that is Q squared. Now, what is Q? Let me complete this first, then I will get Q square, Q, Q square is equal, so I am moving up here, I am moving wherever there are space, um, right, root 3 is 1.732, you know it, 1.732 into 10, that is 17.32 divided by 9, correct, uh, into 10 to the power minus 16, that implies, again I can rub this, um, what is Q? Uh, you have to get the square root now. Now, the square root of 17 will be around 4, correct? Uh, 4, 4 is a 16. So, I will re re see the nearest answer. It will be around 4. What about the square root of 9? It will be around 3. And this is 10 to the power minus 8 is equal to Q. Am I right? Am I right? Yes. Now, what is this one? Almost 1.33, right? 1.33 into 10 to the power minus 8 is also equal to 13.33 into 10 to the power minus 9. So, that is Q. 13.33 into 10 to the power minus 9 uh, coulomb means nano because all are in nano. That's why I try to convert it into nano coulomb. So, this is the answer, correct? So, option uh, uh, first one. 13.87 nano coulomb. So, calculations also a bit uh, uh, carrying uh, away, but uh, you must be very patient and uh, uh, with lot of concentration you have to do that. Not a very tough question. The ideas that you have used uh, uh, already are, uh, have to be applied here, right? Shall we move on to the next one? Yes. 44. Hope you can read the problem. 44th problem. A small spherical conductor of mass 5 gram carrying a charge of 2 micro coulomb is suspended from a point uh, by means of a thread. If the bob is uh, in equilibrium in a horizontal electric field of uh, uh, 25,000 volt per meter, then the tension in the string and the angle it makes with the vertical is. A small vertical conductor, uh, spherical conductor of ma mass 5 gram is carrying a charge of 2 micro coulomb and it is suspended from a point by means of a thread. If this bob is in equilibrium under a horizontal electric field. So, let me show an electric field like this. And in this electric field, if you keep a positively charged particle, it will keep on moving in the forward direction. Now, if you suspend it like this, what will happen? It will stand like this, right? So, the positively charged particle, as it is carried away, the thread will control it. So, this electric field is applying a force of F equal to EQ on this charged particle. The way in which you have to apply the formulas, that you have to change, that's all. And uh, uh, the idea is same. So, electric field is uh, making the charged particle to move forward. Its weight is acting vertically down. And tension in the thread is uh, putting it up. It will be maintaining the resultant of these two forces. So, I can, uh, if I can show it like this and like this and like this. These are the three forces. Now, if this is theta, now their question is, uh, what is the angle that it makes with the vertical? Yeah, this itself is the angle required. How much angle does it make with the vertical? Vertical is here, this theta, or vertical is here, this theta. So, angle made by the pendulum with the vertical. That is the question to be answered. Okay, ready? Same concept again. T cos theta must be maintained by mg. And T sin theta must be 
controlled by EQ. Right? Or T sin theta should control EQ. So let us substitute. Uh, we don't know what is T cos theta and T sin theta. Or I can substitute here itself. M mass of the bob is 5 gram. Here it is gram now. So 5 into 10 to the power minus 3 kg. That again need not convert into kg. If it is milligram, it is 10 to the power minus 6. And uh, EQ, what is the strength of the electric field? 25,000 volt per meter, that means Newton per coulomb. And charge of the particle is given, it is given a charge of 2 micro coulomb, correct? 2 micro coulomb. Now divide these two equations. What is sin theta by cos theta I will do? T gets cancelled, that is tan theta is equal to T sin theta by T cos theta, that is equal to, this is uh, 50... 1000 I'll multiply this 50,000 into 10 to the power minus 6 divided by 5 into 10 to the power minus 3 right and uh, uh, you have to find out the angle as well as um, the tension in the string okay you have to substitute it here and you have to do that okay so 5 10 times right what is the answer of this one when this comes to the numerator it becomes 10 to the power minus 3 and this is 10 to the power uh, plus 3, 5, 10,000 times. Is it uh, 25,000 volt? Yes. And 2 micro coulomb and 5 milligram, uh, 5 gram, everything is uh, all right. Uh, we haven't gone wrong anywhere. 5, 10 times, 10,000 and this is plus 3, it is 1,000. You should get uh, 45 degrees, isn't it? All 45 and no th 30 is not possible. But we are getting 10 remaining, correct? Minus 3 plus 3 and 10. It should not be 10, it should be 1. Otherwise, we won't get uh, uh, 45 degrees. So, 25,000 is correct. 50,000 is correct because into 2. Divided by 5 into 10 to the power minus 3 is correct. Micro is correct. Micro coulomb. Anytime, anywhere 10 to the power gone wrong. So 10,000 volt, 5, 10,000 times, that is 10 to the power 4, 10 to the power minus 3. What is this one? It is uh, 10 to the power 1. So it, it cannot be. If tan theta is 10, then um, that cannot be the answer. Right? Uh, tan theta 10 means it, the theta is something else. I think it should be... 2500 volt per meter this we have to change it then only it is possible so shall I change it as 2500 volt per meter it should be 2500 then uh, this will be 5000 volt yeah this will be 5000 then it is a thousand times 10 to the power 3 10 to the power minus 3 totally and 10 to the power min minus 3 then it becomes 1 so, if tan theta is 1, then theta is equal to 45 degrees, right? So, it should make an angle of 45 degrees, a small change required. It should be only 2500, that is not present. Okay, that is one thing. And later, you have to find out what is the, the tension in the string. Let us substitute uh, um, tension in the string uh, here, somewhere here, sine third, sine 45 or anywhere. I think uh, this is enough, right? T cos theta is equal to 5 into 10 to the power minus 3. So let me use this equation. T cos theta 45 degrees 1 by root 2 cos 45 mg. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I haven't used a 10 here. Mg, yeah, it is right. It is right. 25,000 has to be taken. <laughs> you have to take it. Mg, I have to substitute then it is all right and you will have one more 10 here right so i'll i'll do that once again i'll do it once again so this is mg i have forgotten it now tan theta yes tan theta is equal to uh, sin theta by cos theta 25000 into sorry 50000 you know this one you can multiply this 50000 into 10 to the power minus 6 divided by um, this is 50 into 10 to the power minus 3 50 
1000 times 1000 10 to the power 3 10 to the power minus 6 so that gets cancelled 1 that implies theta is equal to 45 degrees yes now we will use th theta equal 45 degrees in one of the equation t cos 45 that is 1 by root 2 is equal to I am using this one 1 by root 2 is equal to mg 50 into 10 to the power minus 3 what is t 50 root 2 that is equal to 50 root 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 Newton now one, uh, root 2 is 1.414 right that means almost one and a half if it is one and a half 50 uh, one and a half of 50 one and a half of 50 is uh, 50 plus 25 75 75 in 10 to the power minus 3 Newton so this option is correct this uh, sign has occurred from the previous one 70.7 into 10 to the power minus 3 Newton and uh, 45 degree right so a small uh, mistake here uh, but hope you will uh, correct it yourself but we have corrected it so that is how you have to work it out right uh, the idea behind this problem okay we will move on to the next one 45th problem a particle of mass m and charge minus q enters the region between you read the problem a particle of mass m and the charge uh, 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 minus q enters the region between uh, 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 the two charged plates initially moving along x-axis with the speed vx as shown in the figure the length of the plate is L and a uniform electric field E is maintained between the plates the vertical deflection of the particle of the uh, uh, particle at the far edge of the plate is answers options are given and you have to select the correct one right I hope you have followed what is happening here there is a um, uniform electric field uh, created between the two plates of a capacitor like this hope you can see this if I write it here right you can see this one yeah I'll write it a little bit far away here yes so the already charged metal plates like this and the above plate is positively charged uniformly positively charged and this is the region where you will, you will get uniform electric field so capacitor is also used to generate a very strong uniform electric field it is like this of course at the edges it may be a little bit curved but forget about it now a charged particle minus q is made to enter into this like this as soon as the charged particle enters what happens is it will be deflected upwards negative charges will repel it and positive charges will attract it and uh, a negatively charged particle always moves opposite to the direction of electric field so it will start turning up it will start turning up and it will move like this now their question is as it moves up it's upward okay this is the horizontal direction along which it was initially moving the upward direction is independent of the forward direction it is as if you throw a stone from the top of a building if you throw a stone horizontally like this the horizontal velocity is given by you right what about the vertical downward uh, motion it just starts it's the story starts now you have given a horizontal velocity so the ball follows the parabolic path now for the parabolic path for this motion this is responsible and for this motion gravity is responsible and I say the initial velocity of the, uh, this uh, stone is zero in the downward direction right in the downward direction its initial velocity is zero as it uh, is left from the uh, uh, boy's hand then its the downward velocity keeps on increasing with at a rate of g and before that it was zero so it falls downwards faster and faster and faster and it falls uh, here and since it has been given a forward velocity and it reaches to this point otherwise if you have simply dropped it like this it would have fallen at the same point it would not have covered any forward direction so forward journey and downward journey are independent of each other and they are linked with a common factor called time the time taken by the uh, stone to reach from here to here using this velocity is same as 
time taken by the ball to reach from top of the building to the bottom of the building using gravity. Those times are same. So you can use time in linking both the uh, ideas. But you can't use the initial velocity of the forward uh, journey as the initial velocity of the downward journey. They are not independent. That is entirely different. Okay. If it is the story, here also the same thing happens. But here uh, the gravity doesn't come into picture. Here electric field comes into picture. The electric field uh, is uh, pushing the charged particle up. It is negatively charged particle, you see. Electric field is pushing the charged particle up. But part, charged particle is already given a velocity Vx. This is the direction of Vx. So Vx is in this direction. And as soon as it enters into the field, there is an upward motion. What is the initial velocity of the upward journey? It is zero. In the beginning, it is zero. As soon as it enters, it may be having a characteristic of moving forward like this. But its characteristic of moving upward has just started. So upward velocity is zero. By the time it reaches here, it will have again the forward velocity same as this one. Because it is not affected by electric field. Electric field is uh, vertically downwards and it, it is pushing the negatively charged particle upwards. And uh, this forward journey is not at all affected by the uh, force exerted by the electric field, which is perpendicular to the direction of motion. So it carries the charged particle upwards. Even if you have kept the charged particle without throwing it with velocity Vx. Simply if you have kept it here, it would have moved up like this, straight away. It would not have moved forward. So this much of distance coverage is because of Vx and this much of going up that distance, vertical distance is because of electric field. So you have to analyze it like this. Once you understand all the story, it is very easy to uh, analyze the problem. Okay, now the, what is the question? We are analyzing it, but we don't know what we are finding out. Yeah, it is length, yes, length of the plate given, uniform electric field E given, because that comes in the form problem, the strength of the electric field is the E, okay, I'll write it here, E everywhere, it is a uniform electric field, so wherever the charged particle is, it experiences the same electric field, same force, the vertical deflection of the particle at the far edge of the plate is, what is this, correct, I'll write it as Y, and I'll take this as X. This is x and this is y. What is y? That is their question. And if you want to see y, as if, as if uh, standing at the top of the building, throwing a stone, stone falls here, it covers a distance L, we say, and uh, it is initially given a velocity horizontal Vx. What is the vertical displacement? Same question, correct? As if we ask what is the vertical displacement of the stone, uh, it is the same thing. Sir, if you want to know the vertical displacement, it is because of gravity. If you want to know the vertical displacement of the charged particle, it is because of electric field. Why you need to worry about the horizontal velocity? But horizontal velocity gives me a link of time covered to travel this one. That is needed. Otherwise, I can't club the two. So let us uh, club the two now. So horizontal motion. We will see horizontal motion. For horizontal motion, Vx is the speed, L is the distance travel and it is not at all affected by electric field. No force is acting on it uh, with regard to the horizontal motion. So uh, when no force is acting with regard to the horizontal motion, why can't you use velocity equal to displacement by time? It has nothing to do with acceleration. So no acceleration equation can need, be, need to be used. So velocity is equal to displacement by time, velocity is Vx, displacement is uh, um, L, right, totally it covers the distance of L in a time T, say. In the same time as it moves forward, it moves up. So that time can be linked. So T is equal to L by Vx. Is it okay? So time is equal to L by Vx, right. Now that time has to be linked to what? Upward journey. What is upward journey? In the upward journey, we have to find out acceleration. Without acceleration, we can't do that. What, how to find out the acceleration in the upward journey? Now, force acting on the charged particle is EQ, right? Whether Q is given, a charged particle minus Q. Okay, we will take only the magnitude now. Because of minus Q, it is moving up. Otherwise, it would have come, come down like this, right? Uh, F equal EQ. But F is also equal to MA. So what is acceleration here? EQ by M. Right? Acceleration we have got. 
and uh, anything else needed because if you want to know what is y you have to apply the equation y is equal to x equal to v naught t plus half a t square we have got enough tools with us now to solve this problem because you know that initial velocity is zero in the upward direction so v y naught is zero upward motion it has just started as it enters into the field so this part goes zero a we have got and t you have to substitute so what is the vertical displacement in time t half acceleration eq by m magnitude wise i right uh, time square, time square is this one, L square by Vx square. Do you have the answer? QEL square by 2m Vx square. Yes. QEL square by 2m Vx square. That's all. So, very simple problem. Only the thing is, you have to bring, bring that up. Two dimensional motion of first year idea here. Apply it here. Very simple problem. Okay. Um, shall we move on? Next one. The next problem goes like this. An uniform electric field E is created uh, between the parallel charged plates as shown in the figure. Okay, that is given. An electron enters the field symmetrically between the plates with the speed V0. Okay, right. And then what happens? The length of each plate is L, the angle of deviation of the path of the electron as it comes out of the field. So as this charged particle comes out of the field, what is the angle that it makes with the horizontal? That is the question now. Um, okay, uh, let me reproduce it in the diagram. This is the charged particle and this is, uh, sorry, this is the charged capacitor and here is the electric field. As the charged particle enters, its direction of motion was like this and as it moves out this is the direction of motion here this is the horizontal direction and this is what is asked now by the time it reaches here if you continue the previous discussion it will have two velocities right the same uniform velocity horizontal velocity carried out till the end and the new vertical velocity which is picked up initially the vertical velocity is zero so v y is zero there is only v x I don't know what symbol is used here. V naught, uh, something like that. Uh, figure and uh, L, the angle of deviation of the path, yes, V naught. Along the x-axis, it is V naught, okay? And Vy is zero. By the time it reaches here, there is a Vy, right? And it will acquire some vertical velocity. We have to find out not the displacement. What the equation we have used earlier? X equal to V naught, T plus half a T square, right? But now you have to use final velocity, vertical motion, V is equal to V naught plus AD. Once you get VY, you know VX is maintained always. And uh, of course, I can get this. You know this one here. This theta has to be found out. Okay, okay. Uh, v naught is this one. It is the horizontal velocity, V naught. VY is this one. So shall I take the opposite solid also as VY? This one and this one are same. Now, what is tan theta? Opposite side by adjacent side. Finish. But we know, we must know Vy. How to get this? Again, F equal to Eq. And here it is electron. I can take it as charge of the electron because you have E here in the answer, not Q. F equal to Eq is equal to Ma. What is acceleration? Acceleration is Ee by m. We derive this in current electricity, correct? Same equation. Acceleration is over. V equal to Vy is equal to V naught plus A T, right? Ah, time, time you have to take it. Velocity along x axis is equal to displacement by time. Displacement is L by time. So time is equal to L by V naught. Now Vx is V naught. So Vy, vertical velocity is equal to V naught. That is zero. This V naught is a vertical initial, right? Initial vertical velocity, correct? Initial velocity along y axis that is zero. Why? Because it has not that uh, started uh, its journey in the beginning, then it picks up. Final velocity is this one vy. In what time? Acceleration and this time. Why at that time, by the time it reaches this much of horizontal distance, what is the vertical velocity? So what is uh, Vy is equal to V0 plus A, A, yes, A is EE by M, 
and time is uh, L by V naught, uh, L by V naught. Now, what is tan theta? If you take tan theta from here, it is the opposite side, vertical velocity, by adjacent side, horizontal velocity. It's the opposite side by adjacent side. It is E E by uh, E E L by M V naught into one by what is V naught? Ah, V naught L by T, right? Uh, v y is equal to okay. Okay, we can write it as V naught only, right? Because V naught is a data, so you need not write it again as uh, L by T because T is not a data. Okay, so what is the answer? E E L by m v naught square tan inverse of e e l by m v naught square again a similar problem but here you need to use uh, v equal v naught plus a the situation is different okay uh, again another easy problem once you understand it it is easier see tell me what are the new things in that problem nothing right only the things which you have studied already you have to apply yes shall we move on Right? 47th one. Right. A point charge is kept at the base of an triangle, uh, triangular Gaussian surface. Base of an triangular Gaussian surface. Uh, flux through the triangular faces. Yeah, the Gaussian surface is like this. It is a triangular pyramid. With the, it's a pyramid with the square base. Uh, there are uh, four triangular faces as well as one rectangular face. You can see that. Four triangular faces and one rectangular face. They are asking you the um, flux through the triangular face. I want to spend a little bit of time here because uh, uh, we need uh, some explanations here. Now, since the point charge is kept at the base, it is not completely covered. According to Gaussian theorem, flux through any closed surface is 1 by epsilon naught times the total charge enclosed within the surface. Both the terms must be clearly understood. Flux through any closed surface is 1 by epsilon naught times the total charge enclosed within the surface. Suppose you have a sphere enclosing a dipole plus Q and minus Q. What is the flux through this? Flux through this is 0. Why? Because as much as electric field lines go out of the surface, same amount of electric field lines come into the surface, net flux is zero. And that's why Gauss stated it as the net charge enclosed by the surface. Net charge enclosed by the surface is zero. If we put a dipole inside a, a, a spherical surface or any Gaussian surface for that matter, flux is zero now. Now, that means one thing is charge should be within the surface. Net charge should be, shouldn't be zero. And another thing is, um, it should be enclosed within the surface. It should be totally enclosed within the surface. If it is not enclosed within the surface, try to enclose it using some other surface. Then distribute the flux. For example, here, this is the pyramid, right? It is a square based, you know, it is like this and uh, charge is kept over somewhere here. It is not completely covered. See, it is open and uh, uh, suppose this is positively charged a Q, then it will send the electric field lines like this from all the surfaces like this. Through all the surfaces, it will come out. What about the, on the other side? Other side, it is free. It is open. It is on the base itself. So if the charge looks into the uh, upper surface, it sees, oh, a pyramid is covering me. What about in the lower surface? Oh, it is open. I can move out. So you have to cover it with another uh, pyramid like this way here, right? Now the flux through the whole uh, this uh, shape is uh, 1 by epsilon naught times the charge. That is the flux through the whole shape, this one. But you are asked to find out what is through one phase. So how many phases are enjoying the flux now? Suppose you switch on a bulb inside uh, an arrangement like this. That light from the bulb is coming through all the surfaces. How many surfaces are enjoying the bulb? Four here, four here and total flux is this much what is the flux through one surface triangular surface i am talking this rectangular surface doesn't come into picture at all because outside surfaces are these triangular surfaces there are eight surfaces so each surface will get a flux of one by eight times this one right the total charge so one by eight times the total flux that's all and you can extend this idea 
uh, to a cube also. Suppose a cube contains charge inside. Well inside the cube, uh, symmetrically placed inside like this. What is the flux through the entire Gaussian cube? 1 by epsilon naught times the charge. That is the total flux coming out of this, uh, uh, sur uh, this cubical Gaussian surface. What is the flux through each surface? There are six surfaces, four on this side and uh, upper and lower. So it is six, so one by epsilon, six times the charge by epsilon naught. That's all. Right. Suppose the charge is uh, somewhere else. Suppose the charge is kept at the center of one of the surface. Here. If the charge is kept at one of the uh, uh, at the center of one of the surface, now the charge is not enclosed completely within the Gaussian surface. So flux will uh, be through this one, these surfaces, and here it is open. If you want to apply Gaussian theorem, theorem, it should be enclosed. So you have to consider another another cubical Gaussian surface here. You have to imagine this. Now the total flux through both the cubical surfaces will be. 1 by epsilon naught times uh, uh, the charge enclosed. What about through this one only? This is through both, right? Because it has been covered from other side also and the total flux is 1 by epsilon naught times the charge enclosed. What is the flux through only the cube given? This is extra cube that we have added in order to apply Gaussian theorem. What is the uh, flux through only that cube which is uh, given? Then it is half of that. So flux through only one cube is uh, 1 by 2 times q by epsilon naught. What is the flux through the surface then? Of course, if it is uh, 1 by epsilon, uh, 2 times q by epsilon naught, then you have to find out the remaining 5 surfaces. It is on this surface, so no use. A remaining for 1 by 5 times, so it becomes 1 by 10. Okay, suppose the charge is on the edge. Okay, if the charge is on the edge, A charge is kept on the edge of a cube, at the center of the edge of the cube. Now how many such boxes you need to cover completely the uh, charge and uh, um, uh, so that uh, uh, you can apply Gaussian theorem. You need one cube from here, right, and another cube from here, like this, and another one from here, right. How many extra? Three extra. Because now this charge is completely covered from all the sides. From here, this side, and this side, everywhere. Now you can write the flux through the entire system is 1 by epsilon naught times the charge. What is the flux through only this cube which is given? Then it is divided into four uh, cubes. So flux through only this cube is uh, 1 by epsilon naught times the charge, 1 by fourth of that. Because you need four such cubes to completely cover the single charge. Okay, that is okay. Then what about if the charge is kept at the corner? If a charge is kept at the corner. Okay, here. If Q is kept at the corner, I don't draw this. How many cubes you need to cover this? A cube from this side, two cubes from the other side, and four cubes on the upper side. Eight cubes you need. So flux through this cube is 1 by epsilon naught times the charge and 1 by 8 of that. That's how we have to continue. Okay? Right. So that is one more question. Right. Uh, yeah. Regarding uh, graphs. So you have to study the graph of uh, uh, different uh, um, variations. Electric field, electric potential and um, uh, uh, the variation of... Uh, energy with the distance uh, when, when two charges are kept or uh, for a single charge for two charges and all these things have to be studied. Okay, here is a question. One of the following curves represent the variation of electric potential with distance from a charge conducting spherical shell. What is the uh, graph? Okay, okay. Um, I will uh, just uh, uh, discuss it and then uh, uh, okay. I will stop it once because you can't see my face if uh, it is uh, kept it as it is. Okay. Now then I will uh, see, uh, show you the question. Now when 
uh, a charged particle is a, or, or a spherical conductor is charged you know that electric field inside is zero but potential is not zero inside correct potential is not zero so electric field is zero so if you want to draw a graph of electric field versus distance and from here onwards electric field is inversely proportional to square of the distance 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q by r square so up to this point you shouldn't show any electric field correct zero suddenly it should raise maximum decrease that is electric field with the distance suppose it is a point charge only this part will come into picture because point size charge has no uh, inside part it starts from outside itself it has no dimension it starts from here only what about potential uh, this is electric field versus distance and this is the radius what about electric potential you know that potential is not zero it is same as on the surface if V is the potential here potential here is also V potential here is also V but from here onwards potential is inversely proportional to distance so from the center if you start if you try to draw a potential versus distance graph it is not starting from zero it is starting from a certain value which is same as on the surface right suppose the potential on the surface is 5 volt potential inside is also 5 volt outside outside it starts decreasing with the distance this is the graph correct so this is the graph of potential versus distance and this is the radius and this is the distance now suppose two or three two charges are given how to draw the potential so it is a rectangular hyperbola you might have uh, observed this one and uh, any inversely proportional uh, volume is inversely proportional to pressure is always uh, uh, like this and uh, both of them don't touch the uh, axis because if x is inversely proportional to y x is zero only when y is infinity okay right now suppose there are two charges how to draw the um, suppose this is plus q and this is plus q two identical charges separated by a certain distance how to draw the um, electric field lines for this graph now what do you mean by electric field lines the, uh, or electric strength of the electric field it is the force experienced by a charged particle kept at that point you know it so that means you should have a test charge with you and you have to keep the test charge here and there and you have to keep on testing them one by one and find out the force acting on the charged particle now let us take this as plus positive x axis that is plus x axis now um, both are plus q's now let us take a test charge now here small one coulomb when you keep the one coulomb here what happens this charge will i'll name them one two one will repel two will repel so definitely the direction is like this correct it should be like this direction that means our uh, uh, direction of electric field is opposite to plus x axis so you have to represent the electric field in a negative way electric field is negative because its direction is opposite to plus x axis okay when you come closer what happens the force by this force by this goes on increasing that means strength of the electric field goes on, goes on increasing but it is in the negative way right more negative because uh, the direction of electric field is uh, opposite to the direction of plus x axis electric field is like uh, directed like this suppose the electric field is directed like this we will take it as positive e so negative e is increasing so how we should will you show if you show then uh, e here increasing then it is positive e increasing negative e increasing this is electric field and this is also electric field so negative e is increasing is it like this electric field is inversely proportional to square of the distance so as you suppose you move a, a very far away at a point infinity if you move to infinity what is the electric field due to both these charges just tell me electric field due to this at infinity is zero electric field due to this at infinity is zero so it should be zero that means this graph should go and meet this axis at infinity am i right so do you follow this one now but as you approach towards these charges the strength of the opposition from this on the test charge goes on increasing that means electric field goes on increasing increasing and increasing it shoots up but it's negative because the direction is like this now once you come between the charges now you see when you pl place the test charge here one coulomb here test charge what happens this will repel and this will repel in this direction 
second charge both are equal amount of charges otherwise we can't draw the symmetrical uh, graph it will become unsymmetrical uh, this is q this is q but don't know whether it is a plus q or minus q now i have taken it as plus q plus q plus q this plus q will repel with a weaker force am i right weaker force than this plus q repelling it with a stronger force correct now the repelling stronger force from one is stronger so what is the direction of electric field should be like this this is repelling with stronger force this will uh, happen till you reach the center this will be repelling with more force this will be repelling with lesser force so suppose the force exerted by this is uh, say some uh, 5 newton this will be 3 newton and 5 minus 3 2 newton will be in this direction so it is in the positive x-axis direction but when you come to the center exactly the center of 1 and 2 what happens if you play place the test charge now here 1 coulomb here this will repel with the same amount of force as this one and the force becomes zero that means as you move towards the 2 till the midpoint the electric field goes on decreasing but it will be in the positive x-axis direction so it will be coming like this it will decrease to zero right now come uh, go up uh, uh, um, away from this uh, half point as you move away from the half point when the one coulomb is kept here now two the repulsive force from the two becomes stronger than the repulsive force from one one becomes weaker and what is the direction of electric field it has been directed this side and always electric field is tested with the one coulomb charge so don't forget it so one coulomb will be repelling repelled by two strongly than one so it will start moving this direction so electric field has given negative direction and but as you move closer and closer to two the repulsive force given by two becomes stronger and stronger so electric field grows up and from zero it starts growing but negative direction so is it so like this one so it comes like this like this like this and like this correct now as you move away here place one coulomb here this will repel this will also repel direction has become positive and as you move away it should go on decreasing as you move to infinity it should become zero yes this is the graph for uh, two positive charges uh, kept separated by a certain distance and the electric field varying along the line joining the charges we haven't found out electric field somewhere else right this is the graph showing the electric field along the line joining the charges and uh, okay so if it is both plus q both are minus q if it is one plus q and another minus q for all those things think it off and after one day or so i will give you a uh, some, um, a sheet where it which contains all the types of uh, uh, graphs then you can see that okay and uh, now shall we see the questions so that uh, we will finish it okay right yeah which graph this graph does exactly looks like this correct it is plus q plus q so option is this one both positive both positive charges two positive charges right it should be qq should be plus q plus q and what about the pre next one right here you see uh, yeah which one one of the following curves represent the variation of electric potential with the distance uh, for a charge it should be this one correct up to the radius it is a constant and afterwards it is decreasing with time so uh, this is uh, what I, I was uh, about to discuss and we will have such types of questions in coming uh, classes also uh, we will discuss them slowly and we will finish them and it is your duty to look into some other questions also and this will be far enough for CET and you have a need and you have to extend it a little bit and then you have to do that okay thanks for watching and we will meet in the next class okay um, uh, keep on working well don't be uh, under the impression that you are simply uh, we don't know when the classes uh, will start uh, for the next uh, our uh, uh, courses when the seat exams will be over i'm confused don't say like that you should be ready with all your weapons and uh, uh, everything i don't know when will be the examinations will start even though the dates are announced we don't know what will happen but still you should be ready with all your weapons whenever the date is announced you must be ready to go and write it whatever be the amount of preparation don't worry about it because everybody is uh, having the same problem 
so hope you will do well okay we will meet in the next class we are all always supporting you thanks for watching this class thank you